Hi everyone, welcome to The Cutting Room, the movie show by All The Right Movies. I'm Luke, and I'm here with Matt. Hello. And Westy. Hello. I'm just praying none of us have had the fish for lunch, because we're talking about one of the greatest comedy movies of all time. It's Airplane. No, I had lasagna. (laughs) (laughs) And don't start up with your white zone shit again either, fellas, okay? (laughs) Westy, I know you like movies about gladiators, but why do you want to yes. talk about Airplane? <laughs> <laughs> uh, never seen a grown man naked either. Um, because it was one of them films that we, when I first watched it, we, it was like a family thing on a Sunday. It was like mm. after dinner, and like Airplane would come on and be like, right, everyone can sit and watch this. Yeah. And me dad, and I remember me grander at the time, they were absolutely dying laughing. It's some bits, and I didn't get a lot of what they were laughing at. And I was thinking, mm. why is that funny? That makes no sense. But the bits, you know, that, that you get when you're a kid, all the physical comedy that's involved in it. Yeah, classics. I really loved that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the dialogue flew over my head, but I still found it very enjoyable to watch. I still found it lots of fun. And it, it was just the right length for me. I was about like eight year old at the time, and it just kind of, like, pardon the pun, but it just flew over. It oh, just lovely. had one of them kind of them vibes where it's just, it's positive. And I don't think there's any minute of this film that I dislike that I just think, no, oh, that let the film them down yeah. oh that joke's not too funny mm. i think it's just consistently brilliant from start to finish so yeah i'm really looking forward to talking about this one i missed out on spinal tap so i'm happy i'm here for this yeah very nice we need yeah. to revisit spinal tap at some point as well yes definitely That's definitely yeah. happening uh, mine's very similar to you westy you sounds by, by the sounds of things i remember first seeing a snippet of the film on a comic relief show like in the late All 80s right. maybe 88 right. it was the same, after the watershed when things were starting to get a little racy and the likes of Billy Connolly and Robin Williams were trotted out, and I was loving it, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And they Brilliant. showed, for some reason, they showed the Saturday Night Fever nightclub scene from Airplane as part Great. of Comic Relief. And nice. I remember my dad killing himself laughing. Yeah. He loved it. And I loved it because it felt like I was letting into this secret place of comedy that I hadn't really been privy to before. I didn't yeah. really understand it, but I know my dad liked it. So, you know, it must be funny. It must yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen the film a number of times since, but I've got to be honest, and unlike you, Westy, I'm not blown away by it. I wow. never really, okay. really mm-hmm. loved it. I mean, it's obviously a classic, and it's got some amazing comic bits, but I feel like with this many gags, because it's crammed, thick yeah. full of gags, a lot of them, or some of them, don't land for me. Right. But we need okay. to be talking about it because of its status. It's huge, and I'm glad that we're covering it here. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Should be interesting. Mm. It should mm. be. I like to know which okay. ones don't land for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, they will come. They'll come. Well, okay. <laughs> Arguments are plenty here. <laughs> and Matt, you talk jive, right? <laughs> you want to talk jive about airplane? <laughs> we'll love to talk jive about airplane. Um, well, we with the generation that films being on TV used to be a really big deal. Yeah. Because like, sometimes like some films you couldn't get from the rental store or whatever. And I think I was about eight or nine. And I remember this being hyped up as coming to like BBC One on Friday night, whatever. And I'd never heard of it, but I saw the trailer. And I remember the thing I remember most from the trailer is like the Jaws parody at the beginning. And I thought, yeah. oh, well, that looks really funny. So I do remember watching <laughs> easy, it. Easy, please. It, oh, really easy. Well, you should know that by now. Come on. I do know. <laughs> really easily, please. Yeah. And I've never seen anything like it. Like I couldn't believe just how many jokes there were and how silly it was. And how ridiculous it was, and obviously as a kid, eight and nine, absolutely loved it. And now as an adult, there are some comedy films I have to be in a very particular mood to watch to get the laughs out of them, but that's mm. not the case with Airplane. I'm always just really delighted to sit down and watch it. Doesn't matter how many yeah. times I've seen it, doesn't matter I know all the gags that have come in. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. It's an incredibly influential film as well. Probably more bad than good, to be honest, which I'm sure we'll mention as we go through, but sure. in- influential yeah. all the same. And, you know, it often gets said, oh, is this the funniest film ever made? Well, it, it's in that conversation for a good reason, I think. Yeah, it absolutely is. And that's the reason that we're talking about it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, let's get into the cockpit and go flying high with Airplane. In Airplane, Ted Stryker, a former PTSD suffering fighter pilot, boards a flight to Chicago to win back the affections of his true love, Elaine, who is a stewardess on board the flight. The pilot team go down with food poisoning, and it all rests on Ted's shoulders to overcome his trauma and get everyone on the ground safely, winning Elaine's affections back at the same time. Airplane was written and directed by David Zucker, Jim Abrahams and Jerry Zucker, produced by John Davidson for Howard W. Koch Productions, distributed by Paramount Pictures and released on the 27th of June 1980. 
There's an ensemble cast, but the main players are Robert Hayes as Ted Stryker, Judy Haggerty as Elaine Dickinson, Leslie Nielsen as Dr. Rumack, and Lloyd Bridges as Steve McCroskey. As usual on The Cutting Room, we're going to be talking about the directing and the writing team, the cast, our own individual favourite moments from the film. Then we'll finish things off by individually rating the film out of 10. A tried and tested formula, and we're starting with the directors. A three-pronged directing team on airplane. First-time directors Jim and Jerry Zucker and David Abrahams, affectionately referred to as Zaz. <laughs> they take shots at a whole range of films from Jaws to Airport, Saturday Night Fever, Pinocchio and From Heat to Eternity. They had written the script for Airplane in the mid-70s but couldn't get it sold and shelved it after they got a gig from John Landis writing the screenplay for Kentucky Fried Movie. They learned on that that to have control over the material they would have to direct. And that's what they did on Airplane which they pitched as Animal House on a Plane, which it isn't. <laughs> it isn't. No, it's definitely like isn't. No. <laughs> and I want to talk about what these guys get right when making a comedy spoof film and the fundamental thing that I think the majority of other spoof films get wrong, and it's very, very simple. There all the go. gags. Brilliant. Here we go. Here it comes. Brilliant. All the gags are delivered. Deadpan. Yes. Yeah. Straight as a die. Yeah. Compare the delivery of any gags here to that in the likes of you know, Scary Movie. Dracula dead and loving it, Robin Hood men in tights. Yeah. They're outrageous sight gags and often gross out humour, but not here. I mean, mm. there's sight gags in here, you know, a plenty. But in a dialogue scene with the sound down, you could be forgiven that it's any 70s melodrama, but in the dialogue, there's a gag every five seconds. Yeah. Brilliant. And I think that's really helped the film endure as long as it has. And a genius move from Zaz, even as first time directors, that they had the confidence in the material not to make it over the top and go for an extra funny bit. Mm -hmm. The gags are that good that the actors don't need to give like over-the-top zany performances. Something they would repeat in the likes of Police Squad and Naked Gun with yes. similar yeah. effects. I think the deadpan delivery helps the jokes work. Really, I think they land better because you can be lulled into thinking it's serious. I know that's ridiculous uh, saying mm, that, considering yeah. this, but like when the woman has those eggs in her mouth, that absurd comedy, yeah. Nielsen yeah. says... We need to get her to hospital. So it's, you know, it's obviously very serious stuff. You know, she's, she's, she's bringing up eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that's really a hospital, serious. what is it? It's a big building with <laughs> patients, but that's not important right now. Oh, all right. You, it kind of keeps you, takes you off guard because you're not necessarily expecting it because it's really yeah. serious. But it's, and it makes the gags hit harder. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. But he cracks it and the bird flies out. Yeah. His reaction That's to that so is good. hilarious. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the bird attacks somebody right at the back of the plane. <laughs> yeah. You can see it up his sleeve, though, can't you? As he's like yeah. putting it in. I'm like, yeah. Just taking it. It's brilliant. It's so bad. Yeah. She's just got like a little cup in her mouth, hasn't she? That yeah. She keeps like yeah. pushing yeah. to the front and then he. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And also what I think helps is that they drafted in Elmer Bernstein for the music. Yeah. Legendary yes. composer of things like Magnificent Seven, Ten Commandments. And his music here has the feeling of a 70s disaster movie, much like the airport series of films, which Zaz took a, a lot of inspiration from. But that helps keep things grounded, and it's a great contrast to the endless jokes. So I think that balance that they strike is, is perfect. I think what they do here is very deceptive because you look at it and you think, well, they're not really doing anything very interesting here visually. The frame's no. very square. A lot of the time the camera is just like locked off on the tripod. Any camera movements tend to be very basic, left to right, right, left, bit of tracking mm -hmm. here and there. But you've got to remember that's what they're mimicking. That's what all these melodramas look like. Exactly. This mm -hmm. isn't the film where they, they should try and innovate visually because it just wouldn't fit the material that they are spoofing. So because mm -hmm. they take that approach, what that them allows them to do, and it's kind of, I think, what you're getting at, Luke, is they can stuff the frame with as many gags as they possibly can because they're not distracted by elaborate setups. And the yeah. gags are funnier because they're in this, like, like I say, a frame where you wouldn't expect them to be. And I Just don't know how very many... very plain setting. Yeah, very plain setting. Like drab in, in a lot of ways. The, mm -hmm. the colour palette's mm -hmm. very drab. And I don't know how many yeah, jokes is. they managed to cram into here, but jokes per minute must be at an incredible rate. And yeah. like just some examples of this kind of visual creativity they managed to get in there. You've got that scene where Kramer leaves the house to go to the airport and you think he's checked himself in the mirror to make sure he's, he's dressed fine and he's talking to his yeah. wife until yeah. he steps through the frame. 
and he realised yeah. he's just stood in the arch, talking yeah. like towards the wall, and his wife has stood around the corner. <laughs> it's yeah. that gag. It's great, but it only works because it's such a cliched, basic shot that you've seen in so many like yeah. TV dramas like that. And it's the same when he gets to the airport and he's trying to get through and all the religious volunteers are coming up and he's pushed them away until he starts like slugging them around for roundhouse kicks <laughs> over his shoulder. Again, it's a very simple tracking shot. So you don't expect it to like break out into this big fight scene, which makes it all the funnier. And yeah. like the last one I want to mention, because I think it's quite a similar principle. It's that hysterical woman getting slapped and like the yeah. queue of people lining up to, to like take their turn having a go <laughs> yeah really basic mid-shot <laughs> setup but that's why it's funny when it slowly pulls back and you can say like you know there's a guy with boxing gloves there's a nun with a whip some other woman's got a revolver and there's a baseball yeah. bat just like really funny and ultimately i think this direction just look at the influence we've mentioned like some of it already naked gun hot shots all the way through the scary movie and the like Basic yeah. thing, like we've said at the top, very few of them are as funny or as good as this. And that's because I think what Zaz did was they made it look easy when it's anything but. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, very much. I mean, yeah, you, know, you guys have said most of it, but I think, you know, as first-time directors, I think the show quite a fearless energy here which i really enjoyed i think they knew exactly what they wanted you know hiring someone like joseph f b rock who was the dp on this oh, yeah. he's previously mm. shot i mean it's a wonderful life he did he had wow. uh tower, tower inferno <laughs> in 1974 he did blazing saddles Favorite of yours. and there's some shots in this and i know i'm not going to go into oh the camera moves of airplane because that's ludicrous even for me <laughs> but there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's some there's some shots that would be a very thin pan pan that's what you're in for that's what i'm here for <laughs> but there's some compositions in this that are just startlingly good there's one composition where bridges is in the tower and he goes we'll have to talk him off to talk him right down to the ground and the yeah. watermelon lands yeah. but it's just like in the frame it's perfect yeah. when that spear comes in and hits the map <laughs> when he's talking about the old time that's perfect <laughs> and then when the shit hits the fan look at that track, the track. The it's just the shit hits the fan falls perfectly and the camera moves perfectly with cream as he comes across the shot with depth in the frame i mean he shot the tower and inferno which is one of my favorite films as we've yeah. said yeah, and yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. it when that plane comes through the window at the airport it does it yeah. looks oh wow this looks like the tower yeah. inferno and i think you need that level of quality to be able to take the piss and strip it back, I think that's the problem with the newer parodies is that people haven't got that level of knowledge and they're just trying mm. to say, oh, well, it's easy to take the piss. It's not. Yeah. You've got to be a genius to go lower. And I think it looks as funny as the content is. And that's one of the reasons I really love this film and the direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think with Birog as, as DP, like you're saying there, I think they've, they've got, got to understand that they're part of the joke. They've got to give yeah. themselves over to the material. And again, it's the same as Robert Stack. Yeah. He did the same who plays Kramer. He thought he said, he said, right, we're the joke. I understand yeah. now. And to get these performances where they are complete parodies of their previous careers. Yeah. Like Nielsen, mm -hmm. the complete parodies of what they've done. That's why it's, it would have been so funny in 80. I mean, it's so funny now, but getting it in 1980 and going to the cinema, yeah. you'd be like, oh, wow, that coffee commercial, he never has a second cup of coffee at home. That was like a really popular commercial. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. You know, I'd love another cup. Jim never had seconds of my coffee. Zaz also have cameos in the film. The Zucker brothers are the ground crew at the start who yes. inadvertently crashed the airplane. Oh, yeah, yeah, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that way. <laughs> And Abrahams plays one of the religious fanatics who Kramer busts up in the airport. Yeah, right. Great moves from Kramer. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Over that, over yeah. the that when he swings over the shoulder. Oh, that's that's, that's, that's really good. Yeah. Scientology! <laughs> Zaz had an interesting career in the years that followed. Abrahams worked with the Zucker brothers on Top Secret, Ruthless People. He wrote Gary Movie 4 and David Zucker directed mm -hmm. it. Jerry Zucker, on the other hand, diversified and directed Ghost. Mm -hmm and first night in the 90s, but collectively and individually, their greatest achievement, almost certainly. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The Zaz Direct and Dream Team also wrote Airplane and took direct influence from the 1957 disaster film Zero Hour. Westy, do you want to lay yeah. him down and smack him, yak him? What do you think of the writing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... I think your writing's great. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the way the, I mean, you did reference Zero Hour there. It's impossible to talk about this film any longer without talking about Zero Hour, <laughs> yeah. which came out in 1957, and they accidentally recorded it because they were writing skits 
for TV at the time. Mm. They would basically just record late night shows and late yeah. night adverts and just see if they could get any ideas. And they'd inadvertently recorded this film from 1957, Zero Hour, which is shot for shot, plot for plot, <laughs> airplane. <laughs> It's identical, isn't it? It's unbelievable. And you can watch Zero Hour and it's hilarious once you see it in that context. Mm. They might have watched it, I don't know, you know, it's the 80s. They might have been under the influence of whatever and just been like, wow, this is hilarious. We've just got to do this and then just throw some gags in there and make it a comedy because it's that far away from being a comedy anyway. Yeah, yeah. It is so on the nose. And it's that on the nose that they actually had to buy the rights for Zero Hour and they bought (laughs) them for two and a half grand. That's how, like throw away the film was but it's, it's honestly, basically a remake isn't it it's a remake it is, yeah. yeah i mean you, you but it's like enough scary movie and everything else but I mean, if you're going to remake something remake something that's already shit yeah and make it like in, intentionally shit <laughs> don't remake yeah, something yeah. that's amazing and make it crap so yeah, they found exactly. something that was rubbish and it was intentionally rubbish i think and the story's there but it's such a great story it's such a mm. great plot like there's this pilot who's got you know all of these, this trauma and he's trying to get his wife back. He's trying to get his child back and they go on this flight and he goes on and everyone's food poisoned and he's the only person and he has to take over. It's like a really good action film. Like it yeah, sounds it really yeah. good. Yeah. You go, oh yeah, yeah this sounds yeah, brilliant. You expect someone like Bruce Willis to come along and do this. Like It's like Passenger 57 almost, but everyone thinks it's airport and it, it yeah. really isn't. And I mean, no. the, the writer no. of Zero Hour was a guy called Arthur Haley. And he went on to write the airport disaster films. So he actually yeah. wrote Zero Hour and then wrote, it, wrote Airport. So he was kind of part of all that. And he loves airplanes. Yeah, they just got a hold of it and just went, you know what? This is hilarious. And the best thing about this now that we're on YouTube is that we can put the actual lines and the clips of Zero Hour on, hopefully, that are just exactly the same as Airplane. You can just yeah. do them side yeah. by side, which means this podcast is going to be about three hours long because it's the whole film. Mr. <laughs> Bala takes respect. I can't live with a man I don't respect. And I can't live with the man I don't respect. Captain, one of the women passengers is very sick. Air sick? Captain, one of the women passengers is very sick. Air sick? What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, the main course was meat or fish. Yes, yes, I remember I had meat. What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, we had a choice, steak, fish. Yes, yes, I remember I had lasagna. Would you care for a drop, madam? Certainly not. Would you like a little whiskey, ma'am? Certainly not. If you haven't seen Zero Hour, watch Zero Hour. It's hilariously funny, and it's not supposed to be, but you can see that's the the whole influence for Airplane. Yeah, Mm. perfect double feature, Zero Hour and Airplane. Yeah, (laughs) Airplane first, though. Airplane first. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go for Airplane 2, whatever you do. No, please don't. Okay, Matt, mm. as you're the boss, the head man, the top dog, the big cheese, the head honcho, <laughs> do you want to go next on the writing? <laughs> These lead-ins are funnier than what we're actually saying. <laughs> Just because he's quoting the film, though, isn't it? <laughs> I can't take any credit. <laughs> you're, you're ripping off zero hour here. <laughs> That's how good the writing is, though. It's funny just yeah. as lead-ins for this. That's yeah. how funny it is. Um, yeah, I think the writing is just this like explosion of ideas, of, of three minds who are just really good at bouncing ideas off each other and thinking, yeah, this is in. It's an entirely different kind of flying altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind of flying. flying. All these ideas in there, and so many of them, for me, you only get them on like multiple viewings. Like, I can't couldn't tell you how many times I watched it before I realized all the like exterior shots of the plane. The sound is mm-hmm. like a, a twin propeller plane. Propeller. Yeah, yeah. Propeller, yeah. yeah. So it's not mm-hmm. like jet engines, it's a propeller yeah. plane, which is yeah. it like you can miss that gag so easily, but it's plenty yeah. of thought through. But what stands out to me, I think, is this film, I think it has a really goofy reputation. Actually, some of these jokes are really dark. Like when you think mm. about them, like the amount of people who sit next to Ted who end up killing themselves because his story is so dull and so <laughs> depressing. Like that first one, when he's telling his story, it cuts back to him and he's been talking to the old lady and it just pulls out. And you just see her feet hanging in the air, like <laughs> swaying back and forth because she's hung herself. Like, holy shit, what do you think about it's it? When he first starts the story and he's like, when we first met, she takes her glasses off. Yeah. She's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> like, great. That's brilliant so moment. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then later on, just sit next to a random Japanese general. 
Yeah. <laughs> the guy was, with the gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you go to the pilot, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah you should do <laughs> Please that. Please do. Really dark. And then you've got the subplot with the captain and Joey, which everybody quotes. But I think a lot yeah. of the time people don't sit and think, like, what's the ramification of what the captain is saying to Joey? You know, have you ever been yeah. to a Turkish prison? Have you ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> like, Joey, you like movies about gladiators? Because each time they do that, they cut away, so you, you don't have time to think about it too much. You just yeah, say, what a yeah. weird thing to say to a little kid. Yeah. But then, talking about little kids, you got to talk about that boy and girl when he sits next to it and they're having coffee at the Astro Shimon screen. No thanks, I take it black, like my men. Like, holy shit. <laughs> what that kid's Whoa. face, Jesus. though. His yeah. reaction to that. Yeah. But the thing is, it's one of those scenes where it's just passed into, like, beyond popular culture it's in their life like who among us hasn't gone to someone's house and they've offered us a cup of tea or coffee and they said do you want milk who hasn't said no thanks I'll take a black like my men sorry if you see you've never said that at least <laughs> once you you're a liar you're a liar you're an <laughs> absolute liar it's like you can't use the word surely in a sentence now nah, this I'm film really has not. killed the word surely you know, yeah. that's the, the influence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the twice influence. In the film. Right, that? And it's yeah. twice as funny. Twice. It is, it yeah. is. That second it's time funny. is yeah. a killer. I love Stop it. Calling me Stop Shirley. calling yeah. me Shirley. Shirley, there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. Stop calling me Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for this particular type of comedy, I think it's top of the line, but it's definitely more risque and definitely a lot darker than people usually give it credit for. It definitely yeah, is. Yeah, it is. It's like, would yeah, you like some whiskey? Yeah. Of course not. And then <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> that. So, She's in that, rage. That, that little bit. tingle noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> She's outraged. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I mentioned at the top that I, I'm not, it's not a, a, a bona fide favourite of mine. What a pisser. Empire Magazine claims there are around 600 gags in Airplane. Wow. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's, a lot. That's, a, that's, that's about right. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And with that many crammed into like an 86 minute film, there are bound to be some that just don't hit the mark. I'm not really a fan of that endless fight with the Girl Scouts. Right, that okay. d- doesn't doesn't get me. The woman on the runway saying how much she loves her darling and slamming right. into the pillars. I just... I like that one. Do you see, that's the thing, though. That's the beauty of you. Like, you're, you two are, you're two howling. Smacking over the pillars and just running past. <laughs> Bunching it. Yeah. I love the bit before that one. She's like, we better get on board, son. Yeah, it's a train conductor. Yeah. yeah, train conductor. Yeah. So, well, now I'm laughing at them. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm not, so I'm not going to go in any any further ones. But if I think of two examples of a comedy film that I love, mm. Spinal Tap and Big Lebowski, yeah, yeah, they are 100 percent all of those gags land. Yeah. That's where I'm at with the comparisons, really. Mm. But I'm not surprised it was a big hit because there's just something for everybody in the film. Yeah, big broad comedy strokes to absurdist humor, sight gags, melons falling from the sky, big musical numbers. Yeah. I think the film really picks up pace with the introduction of Leslie Nielsen as Dr. Rumack and Lloyd Bridges as yeah. Steve McCroskey. Yeah. Two acting hands, two all acting hands, and they really understand the material. Yeah. But for every show that doesn't land, and there aren't many, there are, you know, 50 others that yeah. do. Yeah. And I'll talk more about them in the next segment, but like that Ethel Merman gag, mm. I really like that one. Right. You might not like it, Matt, mm. but that's the beauty of it. You'd like well, it, and I don't. And I don't really understand why I do like it. It's yeah. just like Ted's in the sanitarium after the war. <laughs> Elaine asks who the guy is in the bed next. He says it's Lieutenant Hurwitz, shell shocked. Yeah. Thinks he's Ethel Merman. He is Ethel Merman. And and then he turns, and it is Ethel Merman doing this big number. Start here. Start now. (laughs) (laughs) It's when they're trying to get her back into bed and she won't go in. (laughs) (laughs) But they double down on the joke by listing (sighs) Ethel Merman in the cast as Lieutenant Hurwitz. It's great (laughs) stuff. That's a great guy. Yeah. I can't get enough of Steve Stucker who plays um, He's Johnny in the fantastic. control tower. Just loads of outrageous gags. McCroskey says he needs someone who won't crack under the pressure. Mm. And he comes from nowhere and says, how about, about Mr. Mr. Rogers? Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and then later when somebody says bad news, fog's getting thicker. And he just leaps yeah. in and Leon's getting <laughs> larger. larger. I love that. Leaps out. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> what can you make of this, Johnny? Well, I can make a hat. I can make a brooch. <laughs> a <tent> brooch? <laughs> <laughs> Snatches it off and then he's like, it's very, very on the tight, right? Now. It's brilliant. Great. It's brilliant. All of his lines, Zaz allowed him mm. to to improvise his outrageous responses. Just just great. Yeah. And, and there's probably the funniest gag in the film for me is where the doctor is asking Elaine if she knows anybody on board who can fly the plane. Mm. And she's thinking. She always had this thing with Ted. And it cuts to Ted for a second, throws the drink on his face, yeah. then cuts back for like, for a second, yeah. bang. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny. That yeah. visual comedy, yeah. considering the setup of Ted's drinking problem and her lack of confidence in his abilities. Just amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, no one I know of. I may have niggles, but they're, they're, there's a lot that compensates for it. And that brings us to a question we have for Airplay. And as you may know, we have a Patreon account. It means our biggest fans can support us and get loads of benefits not available anywhere else, like our podcast archive, exclusive shows every month, and you can ask us questions for the film we talk about. So here's a question for Airplay from James Ozzy Pugh. Take her away, James. Hi, guys. My question is, were the Zucker brothers the best comedy writers of the 80s? Great question, James. Thank you very much for yeah. your input. Matt, mm -hmm. do you want to take the lead on this one? Yep, sure. Because, yeah, I'd have them in the conversation because this, I think, top secret is very underrated. I think a lot of people forget mm -hmm. how funny that one is. Police Squad, which you then get Naked Gun for me, Naked Gun for me is one I would definitely have up there with Airplane, very close in quality. But I mm -hmm. do think someone beats them just in sheer numbers, output alone, and I suspect I might be stealing your answer, Luke, because I'm going mm -hmm. for Woody Allen. I Woody think. Allen, yeah. His output in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah. Midsummer Night Sex Comedy, Zelig, which was yeah. Forrest Gump before Forrest Gump, Broadway, Danny Rose, that's hilarious, that Amazing. one. Amazing. And even the more serious films he did in that decade, like Hannah and His Sisters, Crimes and Misdemeanors, they've got really funny moments in them. You know, personal matters notwithstanding. Yeah. Great work in the 80s. Yeah. 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 What about you, Westy? For me, it was more the Saturday Night Live crew. There was more the Dan Aykroyd, the yeah. Harold Ramis, the Chevy Chase. All them guys, and you know, Steve Martin, I thought was a great comedy writer. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. But I would say, just basically to what's on screen, and because a lot of his work in the 80s was ad libbed, so he was down as the writer of it, I would say for me, my personal favorite would be Eddie Murphy as a comedy writer oh, in the wow. 80s. Yeah. Is Very nice choice. Mm -hmm. Up there, because it's just, I mean, if you watch Beverly Hills Cop again, every word out of his mouth is funny, even when he's being yeah. serious. It's just, just and it's, something. And those are his words and as they, well. They he just improvise from, a lot. Just from his head. And raw, mm -hmm. delirious, two incredible stand-ups. I know the, yeah, the, the Wayans had some input into that, but I think a lot of it was him. And he was very, very young, you know, from like mm. being 18, 19 year old doing yeah. stand-up to being in his mid-20s doing Beverly Hills Cop all the way up. You know, through the 80s, he was a kid and he was hilarious. So for me, the 80s in as comedy is either Saturday Night Live, but slightly ahead Eddie Murphy. Yeah, very nice. I wouldn't disagree with anything that both of you fellas have said there, but you missed one out, and I think it's a glaring omission. Oh, oh, go on then. Probably the granddaddy of them all in the decade, and not necessarily like straight comedy, like straight like balls to the wall comedy like this film, but John Hughes. Hughes, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to his credits. Mm. Here it comes. Oh. National Lampoon's Vacation, European Vacation, Christmas Vacation, mm. yeah. Weird Science, Great Outdoors, Planes, Trains, Uncle Buck. I mean. There's a lot of comedy in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they may not be the best there was in the decade, but Abrahams and the Zuckies wrote some magical stuff with Airplane, Naked Gun, Top Secret. Yeah. And with Airplane, an ever enduring comic masterpiece. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's a big cast with a lot of standout performances, but we've picked out three of the best from Airplane. Yeah. Westy. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Yes. I'm going to go for Ted Stryker, who was played by <laughs> Robert Hayes, who mm -hmm. in this film is an absolute revelation. I think he's wonderful, but mm -hmm. to the point where he is Ted Stryker, yeah. and I've seen him in nothing else. I don't know anything <laughs> else he's done. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't really give a shit. I'm not mm -hmm. interested, because his performance in this is just so deadpan. It's just so brilliant. It's just he, he ignores every joke that happens yeah. to him or that he says, and mm -hmm. he plays it with such like theatrical confidence it's just so down the line you know smoking and non-smoking 
and he just he, that is hilarious. <laughs> but when he, when they're, they're offering him in the airport, he just takes his jacket off and just keeps yeah. walking. And his expression just does not change. Yeah. And it's like straight to the camera, he breaks the fourth wall as with the like, what a pisser. You know, he just has these great, great deliveries, yeah. these great lines. The performance is from the fifties. The performance is from yeah. Zero Hour. It's got, it's got yeah. this real old fashioned performance, and he just knows yeah. exactly what he's doing, and just the way he talks to Kramer over the over the radio, it's just all the lines he's got. And there's that really emotional bit that he's got with Nielsen where he tells him that George Zip was actually there yeah. when he was in the war. And he kind of looks up and I've got a plane to land and like the music starts up. He's just great. I think he's just fantastic. And I think, I, I, you know, there was a couple of people lined up to, to do the part, but I think because you've got Hayes in there and Haggerty, and I think they work brilliantly together. I yeah. think they're so, so great. And yeah. they've just got this kind of magnetism where they just bounce off each other, where they're both just as deadpan as each other. You know, it's, he's that good. He's that invested in the character. And for me, I absolutely love him. Every time I see him, I was like, yeah, amazing. Brilliant performance. Yeah. Great. Bill Murray was considered for the role and David Letterman actually screen tested for it because he, he knew the directors. But he is, mm. because he only exists in this film, I think yeah. that's what makes the difference. Yeah. yeah. Matt, who are you going for? Mm. Well, I'm going for his course, saw the lead lady, truly Haggerty, because I think she's yes. great as well. Nice. And I think, I mean, I think all the performances in this film, they're all really well judged. I think everyone gets it, like understands yeah. what they're doing. But I think Haggerty really does understand the assignment here, which is her performance. And I think it's very much what Wesley's saying about here. So it has to be that level where that performance fits into bad melodrama. It's a very soap opera type performance because that's yeah. what her character is. That's what their storyline is. It's, it's Absolutely. badly yeah. written melodrama. And I think that must be a tough thing to essentially say to an actor, you need to act badly, but it needs to be good at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she gets it and she delivers that brilliantly. Like that first scene she has with Ted when he follows into the airport, that dialogue is dreadful when she says to him, it takes so many things to make love last, but most of all, it takes respect, and I can't live with a man I don't respect. She <laughs> nails that delivery. Yeah. You just think, you could take that scene devoid of all context and say, this is from a 70s melodrama. You'd be like, yeah, 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 it is, yeah, that fits. That scans. Yeah. She knows how it's got a sound, and she commits to it even though it's bad, but she can't flag up that it's bad. I think it's a real like, tightrope of a performance. Mm -hmm. And... I think one of the things that's great about Airplane is it lets the female characters be as funny as the men, which I think is quite yeah. rare, particularly yeah. in the 80s. And she yeah. does get loads of funny moments. I think she's great as a comic foil. You know, she gets to set up jokes like the hospital gag with Nielsen. Mm -hmm. And that reaction she has when Ted's in hospital and he's, you know, he's feeling really <laughs> sorry for himself and he says, because yeah. of my mistake, six men didn't return from that raid. And she just goes, oh, seven. seven. <laughs> Lieutenant Zip died this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and he spills water everywhere. Just <laughs> the look on her face. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But I think if you by the guys at the airport as well, would you like to donate? She's like, no, but thank you anyway. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just like something really sweet about her, really endearing. Yeah, really, really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And I, but I think if I had to pick a favorite bit, it's when she's taken over as the co pilot and she's repeating literally everything Ted says to Kramer on the ground, including, yeah. it's a damn good thing you don't know how much he hates your guts. <laughs> Like, she's not doing it because she's stupid. She's just really innocent. And like I yeah, say, very yeah. endearing. Really, really funny performance from her. Really love her. Yes. Yeah. Elaine, you're a member of this crew. Can you face some unpleasant facts? No. Personally, I'd like to give some props to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who plays Roger Murdoch. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he's... <laughs> Roger. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's your vector? That's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who? <laughs> For a pro basketball player, yeah. he's got some like amazing comic chops. Yeah, yeah. Like when it, when he's keeping up with the pretense in front of the kid who, who says his dad doesn't think that he tries hard enough, and he pulls him in by his yeah. shirt and says, "The hell I don't," <laughs> <laughs> and then looks around. <laughs> the hell I don't. Listen, kid. You tried dragging his ass up and down the court for ninety minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, uh, and Lorna Patterson, who plays Randy, the other student, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. she's just got a real like yeah. natural charm and some yeah, really great it. comic timing. When when she's trying to put the passengers at ease, and it's, she's like, "Everything's going to be fine," and she walks away, biting her hand yeah. in despair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> You know what she takes the, the life preserver off and it's got a duck's head. Yes. And she's just completely deadpan. How yeah. on earth do you do that? It just yeah. whips off her as well. Like, <laughs> and she's just like that. Yeah, and she's like, it has a flotation device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. But I want to talk about Leslie Nielsen, oh, obviously, who plays Dr. Rumor. Yeah. Yeah. 
like I said, the film picks up with the introduction of a couple of characters and Leslie Nielsen right at the top of the pile for me. Mm. Yeah. He'd had a, a 25 year movie career at this point and better known for dramatic roles. Yes. He was in things like Forbidden Planets, Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. But this was a huge turning point for him, giving him a second career in comedy. He was later referred to as the Olivier of spoofs <laughs> by Roger Ebert, yeah. which, mm. yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. He, Fitting. He brought a whoopee cushion on set to set the tone of the film and sold fart machines to the cast and crew for $7 a pop. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy basics, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. <laughs> Always going to be funny. Well, oh, I will do almost anything I can for a laugh. <laughs> uh, Dom DeLuise and Christopher Lee both turned down the role and I think we're going to be very thankful because it is all in Nielsen's delivery yeah, and his yeah. physical performance, yeah. his greatest role. His face is hilarious when he cracks the egg. Yeah. Obviously, you've got the don't call me Shirley bit, yeah. probably the most well-known joke in the film. Yeah. yeah. But there are uh, quite a few standouts for me. One is his interaction with Captain Orville. Yes. He says, how soon can we land? The captain says, I can't tell you. You can tell me I'm a doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just not sure. Can you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. And it's the pause from Nielsen. <laughs> yeah. Not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? <laughs> <laughs> what can't you take a guess well not for another two hours you can't take a guess for another two hours <laughs> no we can't land for another two hours <laughs> frame doesn't move either does it it's yeah. so good <laughs> that, that is hilarious <laughs> does some Vegas like uh, no, gaze at him either he's just looking him at the eyes like it's just, just that just straight into his eyes. You can't take your guess for another two hours. But now he doesn't. <laughs> it's his introduction as well. He's got the fucking yeah. stethoscope on. <laughs> uh, excuse me, your doctor. Yes. <laughs> so. Great. Uh, and another one's when he's detailing the chain of events when ha when people have eaten the fish it starts with the slight fever itching <laughs> yes, rash right. muscle spasm followed by the inevitable drooling uncontrollable flatulence until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering waste of piece of jelly <laughs> 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 and and finally his face just is just in his physical performance when the automatic pilot goes down and Elaine's topping him up with the manual valve yeah. and he walks in and he can't quite believe his yeah. eyes and then just leaves, skulks out and then it cuts to him on the other side of the door. Yeah. Apparently there's a story that whenever he would fly, he would ask if he could go into the cockpit and just say, I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you to the pilot <laughs> and then go sit down. <laughs> he would always ask the serious kind of go in and say that. Well, of, course yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. Brilliant. That's leaves on you amazing. <laughs> on the ground. Yeah. I just want to tell you good luck. <laughs> <Come on>. yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so a great cast, and I think we've picked out three of the best there, fellas. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now for our own individual highlights. A very tough call. Matt, mm. what are you going for? It is a tough call, but there is one standout moment in it. It is the use of the BGs for the dance yeah. number in this. Wonderful. Which is yeah. so iconic. And I always forget how early on the scene is for some reason. I always think it's late yeah, in the I know. film. Yeah, but it, I always it's feel like it's about 45 minutes in or something. But yeah, it's yeah, but it's not. It's, it, yeah. yeah, it's really early. And because for one thing, it's the first time that I get the joke that Ted is a pilot, but he's wearing a Navy uniform. <laughs> and yeah. then later on, he's in an army hospital, you yeah. know, which is one of those jokes yeah. you don't get till you've yeah. seen about 10 times. Definitely but, not. Yeah. This scene, though, I mean, for a start, I absolutely love the old guy who's straight into the song as soon as it starts. Like, his moves <laughs> are just exceptional. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All over the place. It's brilliant. It, it's also one of my favorite moments with Elaine, because when she's dancing with that old guy, like, yeah. she is beaming away, like, thinking, oh, this is so cute. Just, you know, this old fellow, and he's in a disco. I'm just going to have a little pop around with him. It's all nice completely oblivious to the fact that he get, then gets stabbed just and it's murdered. when he's yeah <laughs> and it's as he's dying and just mimicking all his death throws <laughs> but still with this like huge smile on her face like getting lower and lower and lower <laughs> possibly my favorite gag in the film that just yeah. absolutely hilarious but then when she's on Sanson with ted it's brilliant because they do look like they could be in saturday night fever like he wears oh, that yeah. he wears the Travolta Great. suit really well and I think it's really important that this scene doesn't completely take the piss out of their dancing and like have them be like awful mm -hmm. because you know yeah. they solve pretty well. They're in sync. They both got rhythm, 
and that's why it gets funnier the more ludicrous it gets when he starts doing the Cossack dancing and then he, you know <laughs> someone just throws like balls on it and he starts juggling <laughs> and th- there's one bit of it that for me sums up the appeal of the oh. film and it's it's when Elaine is swinging Ted around by his ankles <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then she lets go <laughs> like she's horrified <laughs> yeah <laughs> because <laughs> like obviously that's a stuntman flying through yeah but if you watch that scene again you can see Robert Hayes is in the background of the people yeah. that they, just oh, waiting the for his cue to, yeah just yeah. waiting for his cue to reappear and like in any other film you would think jeez that's so shoddy could they not have like masked him a bit mm. gone to hide a bit more but because it's airplane you think you know what that's I don't care that's yeah. intentional <laughs> yes yeah. intentional. that's fine I get that and you know that, it does that noise when he comes back the ba 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 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Good. and then the pistol shot when he does that <laughs> yeah. oh, that's such a <laughs> great move yeah <laughs> he does he has the moves that's the thing that's he why does. it works so yeah. well so yeah, yeah this scene for me it's it's like the distillation of what's brilliant about airplane so many gags brilliant performances great choice of music just iconic for a reason yeah my favourite gag in that in that whole sequence is uh, there's that CD trumpet playing and you, the camera pans up these long legs and you're expecting yeah. like a topless dancer yeah. and it's just a woman playing the trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Hilarious. It's worse than Detroit. I love the voiceover at the start. Absolutely Great. brilliant. Yeah. What about you, Westy? Favourite moment in the film? My favourite moment is one that it's because I remember it's just got such a nostalgic vibe for me, where it's just where my dad used to lose it, my granddad used to lose it. I didn't quite understand why. And it's just, it's just, it's just so funny for me. People might not even get it. It might not be that point. But it's when he goes back to the tower and then they're saying, you know, it's two minutes. He could be miles off course. And then Kramer says, impossible, they're on instruments. Two more minutes. They could be miles, of course. That's impossible, they're on instruments. And it cuts back and they're all doing... Do, 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 and it's literally... <laughs> oh, I, I, I didn't understand why that was funny. And the moment I did, I was like, they're on instruments. Oh, uh, yeah. can I help? Right, yeah. And they're just a cut back for them, or just the way they're playing it, just the yeah. style that it's jazz, there's a double bass, there's brass in there. <laughs> yeah. It's just ridiculously over the top. I absolutely that bit just creases me every time. I kind of have to pause because it's literally five a five second gag. If that, yeah, yeah, no, uh, no. it just cuts back to that, and it's just impossible. They're honest, the, the, the film's kind of getting serious at that point. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be off course. All right, we're worried about it, and there's no joke. Well, where's the gag? And then it cuts back to them, and it's just so so funny for me. I mean, every every scene of this film's a highlight, but that's the one I remember people laughing at the most when we watched it on a Sunday when I was a kid, and that's why I love that bit. Great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Lovely, like, the cutaways in the film. Yeah, yeah. sensational. They're great. Yeah. They're great. It's timing. Yeah. I want to talk about the landing sequence near the end of the film. <laughs> because there is so much in this. Yeah. So much. And I'm just going to go through some of my favourites. Captain Over's wife is feeling up Captain Kramer. That's brilliant. Wandering hands. We already know she plays away from home, considering there's a horse in her bed. <laughs> <laughs> An insane joke. Make There's it. juice in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> you lay yourself Gets up, up as well. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if it's pissed off. Oh. <laughs> brilliant. Um, Johnny pulls the plug on the lights just for kicks. Brilliant. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his shameless dressing down of Captain Over's wife. Oh, yeah. Where did you get that dress? It's awful. And those <laughs> shoes and that coat. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I love for some reason when it suggested to Captain Kramer to turn on the searchlights, he says, yeah. no, that's just what they'll be expecting us <laughs> to do. <laughs> and the music gets really sinister. Like, <laughs> 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 like pushes in really yeah. close. How about some more coffee, Johnny? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonathan Banks' character Gunderson says that strike is all over the place when he's coming in. And really harsh. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And the piece de resistance. It's been building up for McCroskey all the way through the film. Yeah. He's been this pillar of strength, the man with the plan. Yeah. He's the orchestrator of the entire mission. He gets all the chess pieces together. He needs the best men on the job. And he's the guy who's going to take us into battle. He's unflappable. But all the signs have been there throughout the film. He's picked the wrong week to quit drinking, <laughs> smoking, taking amphetamines. <laughs> the way he just says amphetamines yeah. is just beautiful. Yeah. Amphetamines. <laughs> it's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. And, and he's finally cracked. He's picked the wrong week to quit sniffing. Grapes. He's upside down. <laughs> <And all of> that... 
<laughs> that confidence drains away as he's flailing about on the floor eight miles high. He's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit the way it pans around the room and everyone's upside down as well. There's no need for that. Like, we get it. <laughs> and then they're coming right at us. Yeah. And he slams through. They're coming right at us. And I can only assume that he's killed himself because we never see him again. I think it's you hear him hit really, the floor. I think you do. It's just a really fantastic running gag. And, and in McCroskey, the film has got, apart from Stryker, the only other character with an arc, but it's kind of like an anti-arc. If there's such a thing, yeah. he goes from yeah. a positive yeah. to a negative yeah, 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 because yeah. he lets all of his vices catch up with him yeah. and he kills himself. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah, brilliant. laughs> Where the hell's Kramer? And he's standing there and the photo's exactly the same. Yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I die every time I say that. That's yeah, incredible. That is, and then when his wife's on the phone and he just rattles everything off and he's like, God yeah. damn, no more oh. cheese. <laughs> 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 That's so good. <laughs> Very difficult to pick out three highlights from a film with so many classic enduring moments, but I think we've done very well there, chaps. We have. We weren't yeah. quite precise, but we named about 50. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The film. Yeah. The whole the film. Whole film yeah, pretty. Is a highlight, yeah. No stone left on yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were always going to do that. I was going to be like Spinal Tap all over again. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Impossible. Uh, uh, uh. So the big ATRM rating, what are we scoring there playing out of 10? Matt, take mm. her away. Okay. So, yeah, like I said at the top, this gets put up there in every conversation about the funniest films I've made, and for good reason. I mean, almost just for jokes per minute, and by which I mean jokes I work as well as these do. I don't mm. think anything tops this in terms of that rate. And it is a film that has real legacy. I mean, Leslie Nielsen's career, for one thing, just completely Absolutely. rejuvenated. That took him down a completely different direction that I think he always wanted to go to. Mm. So I think he's really mm-hmm. grateful for Aeroplane and given the chance to do that. And so many imitators that came in its wake, and most of them are terrible. Mm. But even so, that still tells you how good this is, that everybody thought, well, that was easy. That looked really simple to do, and it's easy to copy, but it's not. There's a lot more thought and ingenuity gone into this than it is given real credit for, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there are any flaws, I do think some of the jokes have dated and some don't really make sense. Like one I've not mentioned yet is when Elena's handing out things to read and the old lady says she wants something light and she says, what about this pamphlet on... Jewish sporting legends. I just, mm. I've never got that. Uh, that's never I mean, made just, sense to me. Just, just racist, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Well, it just doesn't seem to land. It just, yeah, yeah that that joke, I'm not, I'm not a fan of. Um, and I know at one point we were talking about having a question about comparing this to Naked Gun and which one we preferred. And I don't know if I would say I prefer Naked Gun, but one thing I think that does have offered is that has a genuinely iconic comic character at the heart of it with Frank Drebin. And I do love all the performances here, but I don't think you would call any of these characters iconic. You know, when you watch Naked Gun, you think, oh, I'd, I'd watch Frank Drebin in a sequel, definitely. Yeah. I don't really want to yeah. see Ted or Elaine in any sequels. Mm-hmm. I know they made one, obviously, sure. but, yeah. you know, yeah, the work good. wants yeah. these characters for me, but you wouldn't necessarily want to see them again like you would with Drebin. Okay. So ultimately, we've mentioned it, we did do an episode on Spinal Tap. That got the full marks for me, and I think that film still is the the bar for film comedy for me. And this one, it is hilarious, but for those reasons, it falls just short of that film. But it is still brilliant. So it's a 9.5. 9.5. Okay, very nice score. Mm. Big score. It is big score. Mm. Well, as I said at the top, uh, it's never been an absolute favourite of mine. But I really think with re- you get rewarded with repeat viewings because there is so much crammed crammed in here that you're picking up new things on each rewatch and I think we well, have to get to a point where you think I've just got to give myself over to this material it yeah. is silly sometimes hmm. and you've just got to accept that yeah but I have to be realistic and personally this is not up there with my favorite comedies like you said Matt Spinal Tap um, Big Lebowski I mentioned yeah are better comedies for me and, and and I do have others as well that I prefer to this but it is undeniably a classic and I get why it is top of the pile when it comes to best comedy of all time list because mm-hmm. it appeals to such a, a huge audience because of the sheer number and range of jokes on offer here as well. So taking all of that in consideration, I'm going to give Airplane an 8.5 out of 10. Oh, okay. yes. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fury, silent fury from Westy. <laughs> what a pisser. <laughs> what a pisser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fury, you know. Yeah, for me, I mean, this is a really tough one. It was a really tough one for me to kind of to rate because, you know, for films, they, you want people to watch 
and you would kind of say well, that that's a 10 that's easier 10 this is across the board you know that's a fantastic mm. film anyone should check it out for me this is a very very selfish film i could easily watch this by myself just to cheer myself up and i have based a lot of my humor on what that is straight down the line you know i find that very very rewarding if somebody's funny that way and it's supposed to be taken seriously and it's clever and it's sarcastic and it's got this kind of hook to it i'm not a big fan of all you know this jumping around slapstick kind of thing i think this is mm. just very it's more of, a, of an intelligent kind of way to tell and yeah. uh, more of an intelligent way to do it. And I think this is the first time it was done. And I know it is a massive parody of a film, but for me, it still stands up there as the funniest film I've ever seen. And I think it still does. Wow. There's nostalgia there for me. You know, first time directors doing something that nobody had done before and nobody's done since. So it's got to stand up there. People say it's the funniest film ever made. And for me, I, I do believe it is. And you have something that's lasted since 1980. It's as old as me, and it's 10 times as funny as I am. So for me, it gets a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, though, Westy, okay? Well, it's, you are a, funny. it's airplane, though. <laughs> but it is airplane. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think, I think I did all right there, although I was being pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, big score. So overall, Airplane comes out with a huge score of 28 out of 30. Big film, big score. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed the show, please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube account, and share with your friends and on your social media platforms as well. We would very much appreciate that, all of that, guys. We yes, definitely please. would. Thank you so much. Leave some comments in the comments section. Let us know what you think, and let us know some of your favorite gags from Airplane, yeah. if there's any that we've missed out. There's a few we've missed out. There's plenty of yeah. room to fill them in. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, there is. Definitely. Keep them clean. No, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> and to support us, you can become an All The Right Movies Patreon supporter and gain access to bonus videos and hundreds of hours of exclusive podcasts. That really helps us out as well. It allows us to continue to put these kind of videos out with loads more planned in the future as well. So yeah. we would appreciate that. Patreon.com forward slash All The Right Movies. Thank yes. you, guys. And that is a wrap. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Look out for more videos in the future mm -hmm. and hang loose, blood. <laughs> Brilliant. One more. <laughs> Squeeze Don't in. choose the fish. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, guys. If you want that help? Don't get that help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was another success, fellas. All together. Well, well I, I think, think that was another success, success fellas. fellas. Anyway. Cheers, boys. Do a job well yeah. done. Yeah.